This week on Three Sides of the Coin, seriously, this is Mark Cicchini's show. We let him do his full review. I chime in a little bit. Tommy takes a nap. <laughs> it's a full review of Ace Frehley 10,000 Volts. This is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Are you looking for official Three Sides of the Coin merchandise, T-shirts, hoodies, and more? Visit shop3sidesofthecoin.com. We Visit ship three sides of the coin.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your support. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. You got Mike, Tommy, Mark, uh, the sexy one, Lisa. I don't know. She may show up. We don't know. Yeah, she but... flies by her own rules, and yep. she just comes and goes as she wants because she's, she's Lisa. She's kind of like Mark, the female version of Mark. That's true. We have Doesn't a lot. The rules but sexier. Her wants. <laughs> well, That's right. Sorry, Adonis, baby. Yeah. Um, so... So uh, this is going to be our, actually, I mean, Mark's oh, Ace Fraley right. review episode. Um, before we get into that, though, there are a couple things. First of all, the comments and the response to the Steve Brown and, and Joey interview, great. Uh, lots of love, lots of, I think there's just lots of love in general for the Ace album. You can say what you want about steve but i will say steve was passionate as all, all hell about his work on this album Look, without as he him should be without him as, wouldn't have. yeah as he should be so anyway amazing comments uh appreciate it so much i do want to bring up to you guys and we can make this just a short short talk but i do think it's worth mentioning um what the hell happened with Kiss in celebrating 50 years of their debut album? Was that the biggest herd they've ever dropped on us? Meaning nothing happened. They didn't do anything to celebrate. And 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 I'm not counting releasing um a colored vinyl version of the debut album as celebrating. I I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I felt like this and maybe in the near future we'll learn more about what's going on and why this happened but boy did they do next to nothing to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the debut album they made one facebook post that basically said 50 years ago today we released this what do you what what do you the fans think of the album there was no Gene and Paul posting a video with some memories or a story or you know some scans of some old photos there was they did literally nothing and and i guess following the way they ended the last show it was like what's going on here there's no emotion well, left well michael I, I a couple of things as somebody who's been fortunate enough um to be able to help with certain special projects from tour books to, you know, some of, 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 of you know, the, the reissues and stuff. There's more to it. Um, you know, I, I don't claim to know everything, but I do know some things. And when, when all this information comes out, uh, I'd like to re-invite one of our former guests um, on, I won't talk who it is or anything now, but, there's more to this story. Um, there's a lot more to this story. You're, you're 100% and right. I don't, and want to start, I don't want to start running my mouth and get something wrong because this is one of the reasons I'm lucky enough to do this sort of thing on a regular basis. Um, you know, I keep my mouth shut. But enough in the KISS community has been talked that I can talk in general terms. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, and I do think as fans... We eventually, and it's not going to be very soon, I'll tell you that, at least I don't think, we're eventually going to get some of the things that we want. Um, but until then, you know, look, I, I, I saw the 50, um, you know, the 50 year thing. 
And I got to admit, I, I thought a couple of the T-shirt designs were fantastic. I, I really liked those. Yeah, but, um, but, but I'm, before, before you finish, Mark, I just want to make clear that I'm not sitting here that I'm disappointed that they didn't have more cool stuff, real cool stuff for us to buy. Because in my mind, celebrating something as important as the 50th anniversary of a debut album isn't just about releasing some cool shit for the fans to buy. That That's part of it. That would have been nice. But again, I go back to there's a freaking whole kiss warehouse and I can't tell you how organized it is or if they know where shit is, but I, I'm going to give you one example. Mark, so two, 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 two years, two years ago, like when, when, when wasp was doing their um, U S tour and one of the dates came up, it was like the 40th anniversary of wasps first show at the troubadour or something like that. And Blackie actually, and I said, hey, Blackie, it's coming up. Anything you want to say about this? And he's like, yeah. And he actually dug out an original flyer. We got a flyer. And he wrote a few paragraphs about that event. And I'm just sitting here saying, why couldn't Kiss? Maybe there was, maybe there is stuff going on with the label and releasing and selling stuff. Does that prevent them from sitting here and going, hey, Gene, sit down in front of a camera and just give me 30 seconds of what do you remember about being in the studio when you recorded that first album? Paul, give me the same. Hey, do either of you guys have access to a flyer or a photo or something like that from it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be like I don't know if you guys have seen what motley crew or bon jovi recently did with their whole big museum that they've opened up online where, where they've created a whole website filled with memorabilia that you as the fan can go in and look at photos and clothing Ooh, and cool it's very cool stuff they've digitized their warehouses basically i'm not saying kiss should have done that extent but why couldn't they have had a bit more forethought and go, you know, you only get one time to remember 50 years. Mike, I, I'm going to tell you right now what Tommy, because you were there with me. Um, One of the rubs after the final show, after it ended, was the and guys, I'm going to, I'm just going to call it as I see it. I hope I don't piss anybody off. Not that it matters, but there was no emotion at the end of the show. Tommy, you with me on that? It's continued now. It's going to be March 1st yep. on Friday. Paul seems to be doing his thing. Gene has just booked his dates for the Gene Simmons solo band. Um, You know, I... I talk to eric all the time you know we don't talk we just talk about our normal crap um but i don't see tommy or any of the four of them talking about anything kiss related i agree and i think that that should tell you you know they, that old saying you read between the lines what we saw then and what's going on now it seems is what we kind of suspected. Look, we gave you our last show. We're moving on. And we promised you nothing. And that's, you know what I mean? What we're giving you. Yeah. And I don't, again, I, 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 that's just me kind of reading the room. I, you know, I'm reading it the same way as you are. Yeah. And, and guys, I'm going to tell you too, there's nothing wrong with that. There isn't. These guys only have so much real estate left in their lives. Well, you know, it is. And another... at the end of the day, it is their band and they can choose yeah, to do yeah. what they want or don't want to do. I'm just speaking as a fan going, man, you know, I've seen so many other artists. I've worked with artists. It's not that difficult to pull up one or two cool things for a very special moment. And again, I'm not talking about releasing a debut box set. Would that have been 
cool, sure. But I get that there's there's bigger issues, as you alluded to, going on behind the scenes with all of that. So what could they have done that didn't involve releasing more T-shirts and more audio and more? I, I, I you know, do they just not care you. right now? They're 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 I, just checked out right now. I will tell you, and, and this is just a personal thing, and I'm going to share something with you know with everybody here. As soon as I saw the new collection and I saw that banner, I went to hit buy because I was just like, I have to have that. And about a quarter inch before my finger hit that. You saw the price. I saw the price. Now, keep in mind, the the uh, that New York banner was seven hundred and fifty dollars. I mean, it's no, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying everybody knows what it was. You can still buy one on Kiss Online for the same exact price. And I remember when I was in New York, that thing blew me away. And I and I didn't even look at the price. I swear it wasn't until after I paid for it. I'm like, motherfucker. I, I thought it was just going to be a couple hundred bucks. And I'm like, ah, piss on it, you know. I Because re- I really wanted it, you know. Because I, I thought it was the coolest thing in the room. Yep. I had to have it. It was one of those reasons I got to the store. I was one of the first hundred people through. I didn't know what was going to be in there. I had to be there. And that's what I did. And I say that, look, with a big smile on my face. I happily went, here, here's my money. However, I didn't feel I was so much getting gouged when I was, um, you know, there. It was expensive and I brought, you know, money to spend and you know, it doesn't alter my life at all. I'm, it's a fun thing to do. I love it. And I would have done it again in a heartbeat. But I got to admit, you know, when I look at that banner for $1,500, and again, I'm a business guy. Mike, you and Tommy, you are too. Um, You know, and I'm just going to throw some basic economics just so people understand. You try to do a 40-60, you know, you try to try to double your money if you can if you can't you know 50 sometimes even as little as 20 you try to make some money well that banner <laughs> i know those things don't cost 700 dollars to make yep I-, I can tell you that as somebody in the construction business i know enough about <laughs> textiles and stuff like that like nah and, and again, I'm not counting their money. I don't care. You know, I don't care. But there was something that just went, someone's trying to make me their ATM. And I didn't feel good about it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I still want one of those things. And rarely have I done, ever done this in all my collecting kiss and otherwise. But when I do, it, it affects everything. Because as I said at the beginning of, of this little segment, there's a couple, three t-shirts I really liked. That banner put me off. I have not bought anything. What is the, what, catch me up to speed. What is it? What exactly is the banner? Because I haven't seen it, it. All right. It's, it's the, it's the debut album cover. Oh, okay. And it's, and it's, it's dude, I'm going to tell you, it's sweet. It's six feet long. It's the same size it, as the other. It's the same, it it's the look. same size and shape as the banner from the last got, show. like glued on a rhinestone. Light. It, again, it's a recreation of the first album. Cover. So it's on, on kissonline.com. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Just pull it up, pull it up right now, Tommy. Seriously. So you okay. can see exactly what we're talking about. All right, media links. Kiss yeah, it, it 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 looks beautiful. I mean, it well, it's I, not I just I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's, it, right as I you want. said, it's real rhinestones put on there. It's not just print. But I I totally get what you're saying because part of me was you know, and again, I wasn't out at New York, but part of spending money like you were in New York is it was part of the whole experience yeah. that you were yeah. part of. Now now back to the debut oh, album Jesus when Kiss Christ. sent out an email saying right, we've got we we we've got this new stuff for the debut album. There's you're you're not part of any experience other than the checkout process. There was I'm no celebrating. There there was no celebration of the album that was happening simultaneously on Kiss Online where they posted, like I said, some 
old flyers or some old photos or some quick video clips where you were becoming part of the experience of Gene and Paul remembering that debut album. This was literally, we got six more products in our store. Click here to buy. And it's like, yeah, oh, fuck, that, there's look, no experience. There's nothing there. Look, look, I, I, as a KISS fan and as a collector, I like collecting things. It's, you know, when without whatever, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but I, I could, it, this isn't an affordability thing. I do very well for myself. Um, it's at that point, again, it's almost like somebody selling a bottle of water at a concert for $10. I'd, I'd rather go, you know, to the drinking fountain than no one being gouged. At least I think I am. And I think I am because they're trying to do it. They're being opportunistic. And I also want to be very clear, as especially you guys, you know, me. I'm captain capitalist. Look, if I can sell this for fucking 20 bucks, I'm going to sell it. You know what I mean? If <laughs> that, that's, there's nothing right. wrong with that. But there comes a part as a consumer, and, and, and I mean this too as a collector. What do I always tell you guys? And I mean this sincerely. Things are only worth what somebody's going to pay. And I, I'm sure there's a handful of people. Somebody, I tell you what, a good friend of mine said to me, I don't think, or I said to him, I said, I don't think anyone's bought one of those. <laughs> and, my, and and my friend goes, you know, there's always one crazy collector who who buys stuff like that, and that's you. <laughs> that's what he said to me. So I, I started laughing. And I'm like, you know, I said, you know, I I really do want that thing, and I'm hoping eventually it'll put it this way. If it was seven fifty, I would have bought it. But I double that price for that. I, just, I don't like it because I don't like uh, the the rhinestone piece is great, but it should have just been a little bit smaller, not put on felt, actually put on high quality paper, and then taken an outtake of the of the actual album or the album itself and digitized it so that it looked extremely realistic. And I would have been like, okay, that's considerably cooler. Well, Tommy, that's part of it too, my friend. Um, I thought that. Don't get me wrong. I wanted it on felt. I, I would. I didn't want this poster cardboard. I like the idea that it's a, a banner. I like that. Um, I just thought it. The print didn't look all that good, and I think the rhinestones don't look all that great either. And again, I, but as a whole, I really wanted it. I love. Matter of fact, sitting here, and you know, I'm looking at banners here. I love stuff like that. The things that I collect. Um, I just couldn't, I just felt that I just, I don't know. I just didn't feel right about purchasing it. And, and I'm not telling anybody here, if you're watching the show and you can afford it and you think it's cool, go knock yourself out. I think it's awesome. But I don't know. I, I just, I felt bad. I did just like, you know, and it put me off from pressing plant or pressing, you know, purchase on anything else. I, I'm like, who's in charge over there? put it this way when i went into the you know and, and anybody who's watching the show who went into the kiss store yeah they had the 750 dollar banner and idiots like me bought it and yeah cool right but they also had 15 dollar pennants you know what i mean uh, yeah and that and that's what i mean I, that's one of the things and again it goes back to being a kiss dealer for you know decades you know, that's what the Spencer stuff was for. That's Look, if you have $100 in your pocket, you're going to want to go buy, you know, $25 things. I get it. You know what I mean? I get it. That makes sense. It fills up your yep. shelf. But I don't know, man. I, I just, I thought the $1,500 price tag on that, just, I don't know. I, I just felt like they're laughing. Someone's going, you know what? Forget the cost analysis on this. Some fucking assholes are going to spend fifteen hundred dollars. I, I don't. I, you know, I get what you're saying. Like somebody's probably laughed, but I think the the issue is actually there's just nobody back there who cares. There's just well, nobody Michael, who cares. There's that, there's nobody who cares enough to sit here and go, all right, this is a beautiful banner, but is fifteen hundred dollars pushing it? Should we sell this for seven fifty, eight hundred dollars? No, nobody's doing that. And, and this gets back to 
nobody's sitting here going, guys, this is the 50th anniversary of the debut album. Is there do do each of you guys want to at least record a five minute video talking about this, thanking the fans, sharing a memory? How much fucking effort would that take? And well, and to me, that's exactly. what that's what I think I missed from this 50th anniversary celebration was it turned into just a shopping spree. That was it. It just became a shopping spree. Speaking of which, and I, and I sent a text to these two knuckleheads a couple weeks ago. Here's a great example about what I'm talking about. All right. Look what I have. You're like Charlie. Your golden ticket. Yeah. I got the golden ticket. Now, I went to the show. I walked out. I didn't even see anybody selling one or giving them away or whatever. It wasn't until the next day I saw the outrage, right? And then I saw the a-holes trying to get two grand from them. It's the same thing. It's the same philosophy. There's somebody, there was somebody out there going, some fucking idiot's going to pay me two grand for this, you know? And I remember when all this was going on, and I said it, you know, to these guys and my close friends, I'm like, I, I didn't understand the selective outrage because... You know, I saw people like sign the petition. You know, I didn't get one of these things. Let's, let's do like, a class action lawsuit. Yeah, and I'm like, are you serious? A... Oh yeah, somebody said yes. that. Oh yes, there was yes. And I'm like, how in the hell can you be upset about something that you didn't know you were getting, and it wasn't part of your ticket or your because you didn't whatever. get it. But but here's the thing, though. This is, this is what I'm talking about. You know, this was a couple hundred bucks. I mean, you can still get them on Kiss Online. Yeah. I was there. I wanted one. So I bought one and I got it for whatever it is, 200 bucks or whatever it was. And I'm happy. You know what I mean? It's like, that's what I'm talking about. This to me was worth $200. I did. I want one right away when I found out they were there. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm like, I'm not paying two grand. It's, it's the same thing, whether it's kiss online or a, as a kiss collector. I mean, you know, Tommy, you've been here. There's fucking shit everywhere in boxes. Of, and I love it. I'm a fucking nut collector. And I love it. And it's passionate. I, it's the most fun thing to do. I love doing it. But I also go, you know, I think, I think I'm being taken advantage of here. And it's not worth that. I'm just really interested to hear this because in all the years I've known you, I've never once ever heard you say that. So what was it that triggered that response? Was it simply just the cost of the banner for how poorly it looked like it was manufactured? What, what was it that, that you're like, ding, I feel like I'm taking advantage of here? Well, I will tell you the New York one, if you haven't seen it, go to Kiss Online and it's, the, it's in the New York collection. Um, I've even, matter of fact, I go, if you can go back to on the three sides fan page that we have or whatever, um, go back to December 2nd or 1st or whenever that, you know, thing opened. I, I posted pictures of it on there. I loved it. I mean, the second I walked down those stairs, it's the first thing that caught my eye. I'm like, I'm buying that. I didn't care how much it cost. When I eventually saw how much it was, I was like, eh, fuck it. You know, whenever I, I still wanted one. Um, but you know, it was also hanging on the wall and you could see it was stitched well. It was made very well. It's not flimsy. It's on felt, strong material. It was really made well. And that's what I mean. As soon as I got that email or whatever from, from the Kiss, you know, uh, online store, I'm not kidding. I went, fuck, that banner is the coolest thing since sliced bread. I went to go fucking buy it. And I'm like, hold on. But my hand just went, I'm like, what? And I started looking at it. I'm like, that doesn't even look like a great print. And I'm like, the letters don't look all that great. And I'm like, $1,500. And then I got a little mad. I'm like, you know, someone's trying to play me for a chump. And I'll, let, and let, let, me, let me ask, let me ask you, Mark, if, if you hadn't bought or they never sold the banner at the last show and all it was, was the very first time you saw the banner for the debut album, you and you didn't have the reference of the other one would your thoughts have been different about it were you sort of like fifteen hundred dollars 750 it's the exact same size it's just different printing on it 
why the double of the cost? If that original banner didn't exist, would fifteen hundred dollars have been okay? I probably would have bought it, Michael. You're right. I probably would have because I I just love banners. I have some really kick ass banners that, uh, um, you know, I, those are again. They're so there's not a ton of them. You know what I mean? I'm I'm sitting here looking. I'll see if I can. Here's a really cool Gene Simmons one. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, hanging right there. I have tons of them. They're out, out in the other room. Um, and I'm like, I love stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's just cool. So, yeah, you know, I'm like, if I didn't have a reference, I may have. Because I liked it. I still do. I, I do want one. Um, matter of fact, I, I, all you guys get the same kiss online emails, I think, that I do. That has been front and center on a couple of the last couple emails. And I thought <laughs> we're going to, you know, whatever, knock them down to a grand or something. I can't imagine. Put it this way. You don't. And Mike, you know this from the concert industry. <laughs> you don't advertise a show that doesn't need to be advertised. Right. Why? Why spend the money? If those things were flying off a fucking shelf, you don't need to put them in a flyer. Push... Yep. Yeah. You know, I think they're going, oh, fuck. <laughs> Maybe they didn't see it the first time. <laughs> and that's another thing on that page. That's the only piece of memorabilia that has its own video. I think they thought those things were going to go a lot faster. And again, I. And... I, I I, I want to add real quick, because you brought up, you know, you, we've all seen the emails. I, I've i been on the Kiss Online email list, and I've gotten emails in the past from them for merchandise and all sorts of stuff, box sets and everything. For whatever reason, this time, I have yet to have gotten a single email about the 50th anniversary of the album, oh, okay. the new product. I've gotten, I've gotten nothing. I've gotten nothing from them. So... I'm I'm sitting here, and I also read online other fans who were like, "Yeah, great! I would have bought the I don't know what the 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 big package of the picture disc with a jacket or something like that." They're like, "I would have bought that, but I didn't get my email until six hours after it sold out." And I'm like, you know, there's just so much that's uh, my feels like, not right. This here. Mike, if you were still working at Signatures and, and, and all this stuff was going through you, wouldn't you have done the picture discs as a pre-order? And if you, because they're only, they cut they cut it to 500, I guess. What if 1,500 people order them? You know what I mean? Well, and, and again, we, kn we, we, we know. Just go, I, I put on one. I, I'm just using business sense here. Um. I'm going to take pre-orders and see how many orders I get and then maybe order a hundred more. I mean, from the warehouse, from the pressing plant, then I got orders for. So you'll it, have a back order. It, of, yeah. Of it just, of them. you know, it just feels like things are wonky with the online store. It, it feels like, you know, we've talked about it. It feels like kiss is just sort of checked out right now and doesn't care about anything that's happening for kiss everybody's doing their own stuff and and uh, this whole discussion and uh, you know we don't want to turn this into a whole episode because it's already been we just 40 <laughs> minutes of this um it just feels like you know again i'm just going to come back to it is not many bands ever get to celebrate the 50th anniversary of their debut album it's a fact. Not many bands ever get to do that. Not many bands ever have a debut album that's worth celebrating, period. You know, there's a lot of bands out there that will are completely forgotten. So this is such a once-in-a-lifetime event for fans, for the band, and I just feel like it was just like they just were like, who gives a crap? Throw a few free vinyl albums and some new t-shirts out there. Yeah, 50 years. It's like, 
I go, okay, you know, you could do that. You can still do that. But I going back to what I said, it's part of the experience. You were excited. You didn't care how much that banner in New York City cost until after you left and saw the price. But it was because you were excited. You were there. It was energy. It's This is what the music industry is trying to get into is creating experiences. Because nobody just wants to buy a product anymore. It's boring. You will buy the experience and you'll spend more money with that experience because now your emotions are charged up here. you you got goose pimples. You're excited. There was no experience for the 50th anniversary of the debut album. Zero experience. If they, I, I, I'm just speculating if they had created a little bit more experience, maybe we would have been, Oh God. Yeah. I remember the first time I played this. I remember when I bought it and brought it home I remember seeing the, the ad for that on TV or whatever. Maybe that would get you as a fan charged up to go, I want to buy that new jacket. I want to buy that new banner. But there was nothing. There was nothing done to create excitement. The only excitement were the fans online going, did I get in on time before it sold out? That was it. That was all the chatter was. Crap, I can't buy the picture disc because it's sold out. Why won't they sell me the picture disc separately? I don't want the jacket. That's the only excitement that happened around this. Literally, the only excitement officially was that. Did fans and po other podcasts create 50th anniversaries? Yeah. They did a phenomenal job. Kiss? It's like, hey, it was, hey, let's celebrate the, let's celebrate the debut album like we celebrate Crazy Nights. Look, as much as it pains me, I think that look, I can only imagine the pressure on Gene and Paul for the end of the road tour, emotionally, internally I'm talking about. I think once it hit and it was done, it was done. You know, I it saddens me that they would approach it that way because, you know, I'm getting closer to retirement and I'll be 60 next year. But I'm one of those weirdos. I, I don't, I love my, I love what I do. I, I can't imagine. I don't ever really, I never want to retire. I, I, the idea just fucking doesn't compute with me. I, I see what some of my friends, like some of my older friends, I play hockey with them. What do you do all day? Well, that you're would, a girl, but it has nothing to do with any of that. <laughs> that's true. But I mean, that's what I mean. I don't understand the concept. Um, but I I get how some people do. Um, you know, it's but for Gene and Paul, because you know, they write their own rules in many ways. I I, I just the whole emotionless last show. Here we are, the first debut album, nothing. I mean, literally radio silence. From the two of them, um, and and let's be honest too. I, if if I wanted to make some hay, and I was Peter or Ace, I would have done something or said something, or you know what I mean. They yeah. all four of them didn't really even acknowledge it, really. Yeah, because they can't even have just taken one of the tracks off the first record, taken all the, the photos they have of them in Bell Stone Studio, and put pieced it together as a 50th anniversary video clip. Video. I mean, uh, that, that you know, we could go on and on about the things they could have done. Yeah, you're, you're, you you nailed it right there, Tommy. There is stuff that could have been done. There's stuff that wouldn't have involved the record label releasing new product, designing merchandise. You wouldn't have, there's stuff that just the band members could have done to go, wow, we never thought we would have been celebrating this album 50 years later. Thank you to all of our fans. Thank you. You, you, you know, it means there was nothing. It was just another post on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of just, that was just like, uh, okay, and I'm not, I'm not excited either. I'm well, not excited. It, it's hard to be excited when they're not. Well, I guess not true. That's either. it. I, 
just because we're some, I know you guys go on the site that we'll never talk about um, on the show. Wink, wink, Jason. Um, <laughs> but I love, I look forward to those posts. Yes. His anniversary today yes. in history. Yes. I love all those. I, I, yes. think I, I love getting those. Because Jason's a dedicated fan. <laughs> And, and in all fairness, before people are going to jump on the bad way, get to beat on the band, they're just tired, you know, and they're not. Yes. I, I, I get that, Tommy. But but again, let me, let me just add real quick. They have people that work with them that they could sit here and go, you know what? We don't want to be part of this, but can you go get this done? Right. They could. It, oh, yeah. They could have they could have assigned it. I'm not going to name names of anybody, but they could have assigned it to anybody and said, yeah. We are just too busy, too tired. We're on vacation. But can you go? Can can you go into the warehouse? Can you go into this? I'm going to send you a box of crap. Sort through it. Put something cool together. It's not like Gene and Paul are the ones sitting at home taking photos, recording the videos, editing the videos, making the posts. No. They pay people. Well, well they could, they know, could, they could have done that. They could have, they could have reached out to a designer is, is and said, it, uh, "Could you put together something cool for us?" Right? Is it possible though that maybe everything is kind of at a standstill right now because they're negotiating something or there's something going on with the record label? Well, sure, sure, but but sure. but but again, this this isn't something that. This is listen. They had enough time to make a post on Facebook saying, "And the album came out 50 years ago." What do you guys, as the fans, think of it? They could have made something a little bit more than that as well. Oh, That's what I, I'm saying. I is, is they could have done. They could. They could have done something <laughs> that shouldn't have impacted any sorts of negotiations or business dealings or relationships. They could have just expressed a little emotion. I must not be a fan. <laughs> well, we know I that. Figure. Yeah. We hear because, that every all week. Yeah. I just have been living my life and not paying attention to any of this. So, 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 so let, let's, let's put this behind us. Let's give the show to Mark. Let's turn the microphone over to Mark <laughs> Cicchini and let Mark Cicchini tell us what he thinks of the new Ace Fraley album, 10,000 Volts. We have Wait to a cover second. a few. Before you start, okay, anybody that gets pissed off by this, he he is not the one to get the heat. He is the one to get the heat, okay? The, 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 so the, the chunky but funky him. guy. Yeah. The chunky but funky guy, not and the Taylor Swift guy. Send it soon because he goes out on tour as the drummer in several different 80s metal bands. No, no, I, Mark, uh, Tommy, Mark told me before we hit record, <laughs> He's probably going to be drumming for Taylor Swift, which is awesome. You'd have a great view, I'll tell you that much. Well, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'd heard they're negotiating because he wants to play nude, and yeah. she's like, "No, no, 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 you can wear." No, shorts. you got to at least wear a nude skin suit. Yeah, you can oh, wear 100%. shorts. One hundred percent. Okay, you guys know better than to listen to these two idiots. Um, I barely tolerate them, so. Um, speaking of which, and these two will back me up on this. I, I saw it because people send me things. I guess there was something on the FAQ and I got tons of personal emails and IMs. It came through our site. They're very Guys, worried about you, Mark. Yes. Yeah, I want to get one thing crystal clear. I was not upset with anything last week, except so if I had a bit of a dour face and, and again, these two idiots were there. I rush home. I just, we've been crazy busy and I'm very fortunate. Crazy busy at work. I fucking run home, hurry up, I get my fucking, um, uh, you know, everything ready for the iPod or uh, I, the podcast. And I go to Mike, I'm like, where the fuck are you guys? And he's like, it's, it's in another hour, you idiot. I thought it was at five o'clock my time. I rushed home. To get here for five, and they're like, "No, it's at six year time." And I'm like, "Oh Christ!" That was the first disappointment. Then the yeah. second disappointment oh, was oh, when oh, I oh, sat oh, down oh. and said, "We're not going to review the album." Mark's like, "Oh, what the oh, fuck? Oh, I got my notes right here for yeah, reviewing the that, album." 
that that had nothing to do with that. That wasn't the reason I was down. So I now run, go take a shower. Liz um, was taken. She was going out with her friends that uh, on because we did it on Thursday too last week. We never yeah we we moved we moved it to accommodate we, our guests. Yes, so we move it, and I I then I'm like oh fuck I got time I run I take a shower hurry up dry my hair and Liz isn't home so I go to the kitchen you know because it's a little bit warmer than it is down in my basement where I'm here at now, and I'm sitting there, and the fucking internet. There was a couple, a couple at the beginning of the show, our guest was talking about something and I kind of wanted to, you know, talk to him about it, get more in depth. And what we do a lot of times on the show is we text one another because if we don't, you know, we want to let our guests talk or something. And I'm trying to talk and I keep getting, you're freezing, Mark. You're freezing. You're freezing. So I'm like, so you didn't hear any of that shit? They're like, no, I didn't hear any of it. I'm like, motherfucker. So that went on for about, what, 20 minutes? And I'm like, finally, yeah. I just said, you know what? I'm just going to sit here and watch what goes through the show because I want to be respectful to our guests. And that's what I did. So, yeah, so was I upset? I had nothing to do with what Steven said, nothing to do with Joey said, nothing to do with any of these guys said. I was pissed because I wanted to participate in the show but I couldn't because my fucking internet. And I think this may Your have router. Been... No, well, no. If you remember, last Thursday was the day Verizon went down, AT and T yeah. went down. That I think I may have got caught up in in that because we've been going all same thing. Every, every only thing is it's a different day. I haven't froze up once. So yeah. So if I was upset about something, it had nothing to do with our guests or the topic or anything like that. I was pissed because I wanted to participate in the show and I couldn't. And then, like I said, when I was on screen, I didn't want to leave. I just thought that would be disrespectful to Steve and Joey. Cause but, you would have heard know. about that. What the fuck? Yeah. Mark just walks out and leaves yeah, in the yeah. middle of an interview. <laughs> or some two idiots would have said I quit or some stupid shit <laughs> like that. <laughs> It, it, was, it was so nice to see our listeners so concerned about Mark. I know, that was the I know. quietest. I won <laughs> one comment. That was the quietest Mark has ever been on any episode. That's why I was quiet. I, I had no fucking choice. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people were like, was Mark okay? What was going on? What's up with Mark? And here's the icing on the cake. So he kind of hangs up in haste and he's like, well, that's two fucking hours. I can't get back. <laughs> true story. That's a true story. That's exactly what I said. At the <laughs> I was fucking I was hungry. I was tired. I ran, ran, ran. And that all I got was I basically just got to sit, like, sit in and listen, the- participate. Um, okay. Well, you know what? I had, I had a few requests for people like, Hey, can you send me your notes? I want to see them. I'm like, no, I'll just talk about them on the fucking show. I literally had a couple of people like, can you send me, like, send me a scan of your notes. I just want to see what you said. I'm like, no, I'm going to talk about it on the show. Um, all right. So I, I, I took care of that part of it because there, you know, again, not just on our site, on other sites, people mentioned that I was upset. I'm not upset about anything. I wish and I, again, I, I don't, this is not meant to, it's not disrespectful. It's not meant to be. I hold um, uh, Steve in very high esteem, super, super talent. By the way, I want this to be underlined three times. I think Steve is extremely talented at what he does. And I think he's a genuinely good guy. I don't know him. Um, I also say that I couldn't tell you, and I'm not being facetious, I couldn't tell you one trickster song. I couldn't tell you one piece of music that I've heard that he's played on. I don't know anything about him. Um, we do have mutual friends. I've heard nothing but nice things about him. With that said, if my, Joey's a whole different story. Joey's that a whole asshole. different story. <laughs> <laughs> I love Joey and he knows it. So Someone had to say it out loud. <laughs> so um yeah joey's joey's my paisan i love that guy so i fuck with him as much as i fuck with tommy so as you guys saw in the emails today. <laughs> so um so i think had i been able to speak last week i i um i i hold some things that steve said i i don't agree with um <clears throat> the one thing and i want you guys to join in too 
I know, Mike, I think you have a different opinion than I do. I thought the comment about this is the best kiss related thing since revenge was sorry, Steve. I, I'm just telling you because I I'm saying this respectful. I disagree. I, I don't think there's a single song on the new Ace record. That's I could name a dozen kiss songs that came out since revenge. I think are head, a head and shoulders above everything on that. And that's just my opinion. Subjective. That's just my, opinion. My, 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 you know, my opinion on that. And I, I base this solely on how much do I listen to these albums? And, you know, after Revenge, I'm like, forget about Carnival of Souls. Psycho Circus, I'm a fan of. There's a few songs in there that I'm like, ah, let's fast forward, skip those I don't songs. think there's a song that's better than Psycho Circus. Not Put it this way. There's not a song on the New Ace that's better than Psycho Circus. Oh. Not only is not there not a song better than Psycho Circus, there's not even a song on there that's even a hundred yards close to being as good as Psycho. Psycho Circus, to me, is a classic kiss song. I, I, I could... Potentially hold fighting for life up to Psycho Circus, oh, no, but but you 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 you've got a point. The Psycho Circus song, but I'm I'm looking as a as a, as an album overall. Um, Monster, yeah, nothing for me right here right now. Off of Monster, I do love that song, but that's one bonus track. Sonic Boom could be, um. I once Sonic Boom got released digitally everywhere a year or so ago, and I started listening to it a lot more. I really have grown to really love that album much more than I thought I did. Might be one song, two songs in there that I'm not a big fan of, but I could potentially sit here and go, uh, Sonic Boom is 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 better than Ace. But saying all of that. To your po- your initial point, Mark, this is all 100% each person's opinion. Mm-hmm. And I told, I told, like when Joey said that, or not Joey, when, when Steve said that, I was like, I know Mark wouldn't agree with that, but that's, that's 100% fine. We know, Mark, you love Monster and Sonic. Boom. I do. And, the, and that, that's great. I'm not, I've never been a vocal fan of Monster other than the one song, and Sonic Boom is growing on me. Um, but again, just from pure listening, holy crap, I'm playing the hell out of 10,000 volts, the album, because it's, it's in my, my listening preference, it's a good enough album that I can just hit start at 10,000 volts and listen to it all the way to the end and enjoy it. I, it's not an album where I'm like, oh, all right, let me skip these two songs. Let me fast forward to the back to the end here that tells you everything you need to know about how you, you, how you feel about the record. And I just am not a fan of feeling the need to compare it to one thing or another, either it stands on its own and I like the record, but it has nothing to do with monster or sonic boom. And I would never compare the two because they're completely different. You're, so. you're exactly right. And here's, here's the, this just dawned on me today. Here's the ultimate point. We're not being required to only have one album. You can listen to 10,000 volts and you can also listen to Sonic Boom or Monster or Carnival of Souls, if that's your favorite, or Psycho Circus. You can have them all or you don't need to have any of them. We're not like being forced onto a desert island where it's like you can only take one album. Which album are you going to take? I'm sorry. Uh, This morning I listened to 10,000 volts and when I was done, guess what I listened to? Sonic Boom. Okay, I got both of them. I'm happy as could be. So I I get what Steve was saying there, and I understand where he was coming hold from. On, and and people don't need to get wrapped up in it. Look, if you're Steve, and God bless his heart, man, he busted his ass on this thing. He's going to tell us it's the greatest thing no matter what. He's trying to sell it. And, and, and guys, guess what? Everyone does that. And as he should. You know what I mean? You don't you don't release an album on the day, you know, the week it's released to go. Eh, you know, I thought we could have done It's that. our fourth best album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, <laughs> so God bless him is for his pontificating and bloviating. I I totally get it, man. And look, I, 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 let's get to it. I, Let's I, get to I, the notes. 
Yeah, because I never do this. I mean, rarely do we have. Does Mark ever come this prepared? That's you're absolutely right. It's that. not that I don't. It's not that I don't care, guys. It's just that normally I can. I don't care it. that much. <laughs> yeah, I care, but I don't care that. So, anyways, what I do, and I do this because I get, I get, believe it or not, you know, I've I've, I've done stuff with Martin Popoff and in, in books, and you know, uh, I've got asked to review stuff, and I also get people who send me their music, and I always tell them I'm going to be honest. So. You know, and I always, I always have this little scale. I do. If there's ten songs on the album, right? This one, there's eleven. I'm just pointing that out for this. Ten, ten songs, one instrumental. But yeah, but there, but that's eleven songs. Right. Each song gets ten points. Now, to be cute, I'm going to give it. You know, ten is 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 uh, uh, rip it out. So if I give it. 10 rip it outs it means it's as good as rip it out if i give it six rip it rip it outs it's half as good as rip it out if i give it two because i think rip it out is one of ace's best songs if not his best song i love i'm talking about solo stuff so anyways this album had a possible with me this album had a possible 110 points that's that's the most points you could get okay so I'm going to go through track by track, give you my little notes, and we'll add it all up at the end. I love how Mark's using a flashlight to read his notes. <laughs> yes. It's kind of dark. <laughs> I'm in the fucking basement. Oh, listen, I do that all the time. Your eyes go when you start getting older. <laughs> I, just, I just got prescription readers this week, except I use them at work because I'm invoicing and estimating. So I got to use them at work. So anyways, 10,000 volts. Guys, one out of 10. I gave it a seven plus or eight minus. I couldn't, couldn't really. In my notes, I said, "Are you guys familiar with the Danko Jones song, Active Volcanoes?" No, it's, not off the top it's, of my it's head. It's basically Danko Jones ripping off Kiss, "Lover All I Can." It's if you get a chance, listen to Active Volcanoes because it kind of has the same beginning as as 10,000 volts in some ways. And it's funny because that's Danko Jones ripping off Kiss. And here's and Ace isn't ripping that. I'm not saying yes, but it's just it just sounds keep in mind it's a Kiss song. They're they're both, you know, uh kind of uh ripping the feel off of. So I, I that was the first thing as soon as I and I keep in mind I wrote these down the first time I listened to the album. So these are my initial um things. So I put Active Volcano Danko Jones type of intro, which is a ripoff of Kiss's Lover All I Can. I said that it's got a solid chorus and verse. Lyrics, eh, standard. One thing I did think it was kind of funny, one of my favorite Ace songs of the current Ace, and I know, Michael, you like it a lot too, is What a Girl Wants. Did you notice the melody in the line from the line that says, Time waits for no one. He uses that same line in What a Girl Wants. It's also in 10,000 Volts. And the melody is almost exactly the same. The time waits for no one. Interesting. I, yeah. So, I, again, these are just things that when I listen to it. So, again, that one gets us 8 minus 7 plus. Walking on the Moon, I give it an 8. I think it's one of the stronger songs. Really? That- Yes, I really like that one a lot. I said, cool riff and chorus. <laughs> and as a, I've written lots of songs. I said, extra credit for rhyming consumed and moon. I thought that was, <laughs> when, you're, when you've ever written songs, you know, you got to, sometimes you got to find a, a word that sounds like another one. Right. I, I thought that was kind of cool. You, you know, I, 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 I will add real quick to, to these first two songs. Um, I wasn't a big fan when either of these were first released as singles. 10,000 volts has really started to grow on me. Where Walking on the Moon has started to go the opposite direction for me. Oh, I I, I think now, and I as, as, as I and I've listened to 10,000 volts a dozen times now. Um, I actually upon first listen well you're gonna see what we'll go through there so i like walking on the moon quite a bit um solid riff solid lyrics 
said it is what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a really good ace song, a really good modern ace song. Um, Cosmic Heart is next. Seven plus, eight minus. It said a very Kiss-like riff in verse. I like how the progression is. It's like a slower version of, you know, the Beatles song, Helter Skelter? Yep. It sounds like they kind of took that same vocal delivery, but did it in halves. It's not as fast as, as the Beatles. Um, I think... Uh, I thought that, and again, when you're writing songs, you sometimes go to like songs you like, like, how did they get that? How did they fit that in? And sometimes you can go like, oh, yeah, I'll do it in halftime. So you're not stealing it, but you're, you're using the same sort of idea. I'm not saying they did. That's what my ears hear. Again. Um, but I thought it was a great, I, I like the way it goes. Um, cool tempo and a performance. It's a well-written song. Um, and it's a classic ace solo. So I like Cosmic Heart quite a bit. So I yeah, that, that Co Co Cosmic Heart is a is in the top three songs off the album for me right I now. I, I really fun. love it. I love I love the intro. I especially yeah. love that intro. It's very kiss like. And like yep. I said so far, I'm three songs in. I'm going, wow. And and keep on, this is out of ten. Yeah, an eight, eight, seven plus eight, you know what I mean? It's like right there. I'm like Yep. I'm digging. I'm really digging it. Oh boy. Then oh boy, Cherry Medicine. It. Yes. And and guys, musically, it's an eight plus. I'm talking take the vocals out, take the melody out. The guitar playing, the 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 way it's written and constructed, I think it's great musically. Very well, I put very well written musically. The vocal verses. Oh, I, I'm trying to read my writing here. I, I thought the the, uh, the 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 verse the verses are that's what I wrote. Vocal because like I said, musically I gave it an eight plus. Vocal verses a three. I thought the vocals and the lyrics and the vocal melody are just terrible on the verses, and and just they're cringy. I mean, I, it was like when I was listening to him sing that, he was almost like I could see him like it almost sounded like a sixth grader writing a love note to his girlfriend. I was like, oh, this is terrible. However, the chorus, I said the chorus itself, just the chorus, it's a nine. That's that cherry medicine gets in your head, man. That's a that's a that's a catchy fucking chorus, man. So I said in my notes, I wrote verses need to be re re -hit, rewritten both lyrically and um, melody wise. Solid solo break. And I gave Cherry Medicine a five. Five. OK. Cherry Medicine is and I think I had said this last week. Um, when I first listened to Cherry Medicine, the absolute first time I was like, I remember my notes were, what the fuck is this? This is like Dolls. If you remember Dolls from the first Fraley's Comet album, it that to me was a song that was like, what a weird song. What is this doing here? But it also became quite addictive of a song for me. It's like that that's kind of like my hidden go-to song on oh, the Fraley's Dolls. I love Dolls now. So I said Cherry Medicine, my first listen. Cherry Medicine, quirky, just like dolls. But what the fuck am I listening to? It was a, it's a weird song, but I will say it's also one that it's, it's now in my top three. Really, of the album it is because it has just, it's got an earworm to it. Oh, the chorus is great. The, that is a as, well and and, and and listen, I will say for this whole album. There's no genius lyrics going on here, people. There's no brilliant writing going on. It's just good, solid, Ace Fraley, rock and roll. And Cherry Medicine, I remember, like, am I listening to a song about 
medicine or am i listening to a song about a girlfriend and is the girlfriend's nickname cherry medicine i don't know what's going on with this song this is very weird and you look better in your black leather what's that got to do with cherry medicine i you know i'm i'm I'm, I'm overthinking this whole lyrical content and i'm like wait can't get overthinking ace's lyricals content it just you'll you'll kill yourself doing that but it i love i'm cherry medicine is 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 right up there in the top three for me tommy you're muted you're, what you're muted. what wake up first any comments I <laughs> no i have nothing to say that's fine we'll get comments next week about people who are like what the fuck was tommy there for look i've listened to the record once that's it haven't had time to listen to it more than that. I have no opinion at this point, one way or another. And I, I mean, he's not an ace Mark fan. He's rain. not a Kiss fan. He's not an ace fan. No, I'm. No, why the fuck I'm here? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, Mark. Mark's doing a great job. I don't need to like yep, interject. Keep, keep, keep going. Yeah, keep going, please. Mark. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Back into my arms again. I fucking love Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love all of our attitudes about this show. What the fuck are we doing this for? All right. Oh, boy. Here we go. If you guys remember, we, we talked about Psycho Circus a while ago. Um, I said at the time that I wish they would have put Sister on there because the demo was fucking awesome. And then Ace eventually put it on. I don't know if it was on Spaceman or Space Invader or whatever. And it just didn't, the demo was just so much better. Well, I think if you're listening to this show, for the most part, you know that that was an unreleased, that's an old Ace demo. Um, And I just, I'm just used to hearing the demo. I, I just can't, be, also too, you know, the demo was cut 30 years ago or ever. And I'm, someone's going to go, no, it wasn't. It was 35. Look, I, I'm not, I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm just telling you, it was cut a long time ago. I think even in the 80s. 84, I think. Well, yeah. So, so you know, have a heart here. I'm just talking in generality. Ace was, a, and Ace was never a strong vocalist, meaning he could, you know, he's also too. Oh, I'll get to this at the end. I want to tie all this together. But anyways, I, I, Ace's voice was stronger. I like his delivery. It's hard to get because I've heard because I, I have a ton of Ace demos. I think everybody that listens or watches the show, I'm sure you guys got demos you love that you listen to and were collected over the years, at least a large amount of you. And that was one I was like, that was a good song. And it's just weird hearing it with great production. I, it's hard. with I just don't like Ace's vocal on it just because I'm used to the other one. So, back into my arms again gets me, you know, I give it a five. I'm just, I just can't get over the. I, 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 I would plus, probably. Honestly, I just don't think it's all that great. I would probably agree with that rating. Although I will say back into my arms again, each time I listen to it grows on me a little more and a little more. But the first time I listened to it, I could care less. First time I went through this album and heard it, I was like, ah, who cares about that song? Uh, that did nothing for me. It's growing on me. It's nothing special. It's, like you said, a five. That's average. It's an average song right now. A month from now, it might be better. I don't know, but it's okay. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a dud, and I don't, let's put it this way. As I listen to the album, I'm not sitting here going, oh, fuck, back into my arms again. It's the next track coming up in queue here. Can I just skip it? I'm not feeling that way about the song. All right. So um, now on to, I think, generally a, a, among a lot of fans, Fighting for Life, baby. I gave that's the highest rated song on the record for me. I gave it a nine, mi- a nine minus eight plus. I think it's, I think it's what, myself that's what i want from ace yes um, and, we'll get, and we'll get to this later on at the end because i want to tie a few things together at the end um plus go over the you know the numbers on this um my favorite ace song since 78 is probably um uh shot full of rock it's everything that i want an ace freely song to be 
great solos, aggressive. That's what I want for my ace. I don't want back into my arms again. I, I want fucking rock and roll. I want rip it out. I want full bore fucking rock and roll. And I got it with uh, with uh, fighting for life. Um, to me, I said it sounds like it could be off of Trouble Walking. Tough, hard edge rocker, classic ace. Um, oh, and I put vocally, I would love to hear Richie Scarlett or Paul Stanley sing this song. I think it would have been a, don't get me wrong, I think Ace does a good job on the vocals. But, and I'm talking when I say Paul, Paul, you know, Psycho Circus era Paul would have really tore this song up. Um, wish it was there then. Um, don't get me wrong. doesn't take away, and I'm not nitpicking. Oh, excuse me, I am nitpicking. Um, I, I really like this song a lot. It, yeah. it does a lot for me. Yeah, when, when, when I listened to the album the very first time and Fighting for Life came up, I, it, it was like getting hit in the forehead by a two by four. It was like, holy should shit. Have been the, should have been the first song on that should have kicked off the record. Let, let, let me use this illustration. We've used this many times. It's like back when you first dropped the needle on the Creatures of the Night album and you were like, holy shit, Kiss is back. And when I heard Fighting for Life, I was like, holy crap. This is Ace Fraley. This is what I love. This is what he should sound like. There is nothing wrong with this song whatsoever. It rocks. It's hard. It's got hooks. It's everything you wanted in a great song. It's still there for me today after listening to this album probably 50 times since I've gotten it. Fighting for Life. There is nothing wrong with that song. I, the only thing I question is why did they not release that as a single instead of Walking on the Moon or 10,000 Volts or even Cherry Medicine? As we've seen online in general, every fan, 99% are saying Fighting for Life without question, the best song off the album. Uh, next up, Blinded. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's kind of my feeling. <laughs> um, that vocal intro is just cringy. It just doesn't work. Should have just started with the guitar. I put music and lyrics are okay. It's decent, not great. I don't think there's much more to say about Blinded other than it's an average A song in this era, which isn't saying a lot. Again, it's not horrible. Just it's a five for me. I does nothing for me. Yeah, I'd I'd probably do a four or five. I remember my my very first listen and notes were nothing more than blinded. I'd rather have blinded by science. <laughs> if you know All right. you you gotta be a kid of the eighties to understand that yeah. reference. <laughs> All right. Um here, here here we go. Constantly cute. This this is the one that kind of reminds me of dolls in a way where it I'm like this one works it's quirky i said uh i said like this one a lot decent verse i said it's a sleeper track it's really good it's got a great chorus um i said the chorus saves the song much like uh cherry medicine does except this is a better song fun track barely as i put very freely well, very freely's comet Classic A solo. I gave this one a seven plus. I think it's a really constantly cute is one of the better songs on the record. I like that one a lot. It, I, I think it's a grower song, meaning when I first listened to it, I was just like, oh, my God, the lyrics on this are so freaking cheesy bad. This has got to suck. The more I listen to it, again, the earworm is grabbing hold. And I know comments from fans are very divided on this as being either good or this is just a terrible lyrical song. It's, it's not bad. I, you know, I'll give it a five or six right now, but I think it's getting better each time I listen to it. It's Again, it's not a song that I'm dreading when it comes up next in queue. There really isn't a song on this album that I dread having to listen to. Yes, there is. 
Tommy, <laughs> Tommy, just to wake up for a second. What did Keith Moon say to Jimmy Page when they were going to name the band? Do you remember that story? Hold my drink. <laughs> That's going to go over like a lead balloon, meaning boom. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm awake. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And this was this was kind of the one again because I was froze. I want this is something I would have liked to pick Steve's brain with. Um, and keep in mind when we were fortunate enough to get the record sent to us to review, we didn't know anything about who. There was no. We had no production credits. Wrote, yeah, zero, zero. So you just assumed everything was an original. I didn't know this was a cover. I since have went. And listen to, which I will give him credit, meaning give Ace credit that he um, tried to rewrite. And I like that. I like when people take a song. I don't like a straight cover. I like a rewrite. Make it their own. Yep. Yes. Yes. Well, he made his own. I thought he took a shitty song and made it shittier. Um, I have Life of a Stranger. (laughs) Weakest track. Shouldn't even be on the album. I gave it a one just because they took the time to record it. I think wow. it's garbage. I've listened to that over and over. I'm like, this just doesn't work. Ace is terrible. Just don't like it. When I started, I was right there with that in agreement. When I first heard this, I'm like, what a fucking dud song. Terrible. It's a one. Now, and, and it's mainly because... As I listen to songs more and more, I get into the lyrics because I still haven't seen the lyrics. I don't have the lyrics for these songs. So I'm just going off of what I hear. And Life of a Stranger, I knew was a cover tune. I wasn't familiar with the original. Did you know that so originally, I, Mike? Did you know that originally? I did. Uh, I, had, I, I only knew it because I remember an earlier interview of A saying it was a, he was doing it as a cover. I don't remember, I don't know the original tune, so I never compared Ace to the original. But, and and this might be, this is something a lot of fans are being critical of this album. Life of a Stranger, as I listen to it and I envision it's Ace singing or writing this to Laura, his girlfriend. There's some heavy meaning going on here. There's some real heavy meaning. And if, if Ace took Life of a Stranger because of that lyrical meaning that it has between him and his girlfriend, awesome, that's awesome. It, it, it's, it, it means something to him. It's, it's important to him. It's some heavy content. The song is growing on me. It's not a one. It's not a nine. It's moving up the charts at about a six right now. Um, I'd take blinded over this 10 out of 10 times and I don't. Oh, no, 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 not at all. I'll take life of I'll take life of a stranger over blinded. Yeah, I, I but see, that's the I, and again, I'll save this for the wrap up, but that sort of lyrical thing. And and keep in mind, go back to uh, what was it? Uh, it had a, it's one of my favorite songs on Space and Space Invader. As he's starting it, he goes, this is for Rachel. You know, it's like. You know, there's on this record, you know, and I know it's Laura now, you know, there's, I, I know I have to be better now. I have to be a better man. Whatever, I think that's in the cherry medicine verse and stuff. There's, there's put it this way. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out how a lot of these lyrics are about his current relationship. Sure. And I'm just, I'm just going to say this. I don't, I don't want to know that. You know what I mean? It, I don't want it to be that fucking obvious because I, I don't care. I just want you to rock. You know, I it, it, and again, Kiss, if you're watching the show, is our favorite band. And, you know, I don't want to be so crude, but Fuck Me, Suck Me songs are what built them. You know, Calling Dr. Love and Love Gun and, you know, I mean, Shock Me. And just, that, that's what I like. I, I want, I don't, I don't want this, oh, I need you girl bullshit. I, it's just like, put your hand in my pocket, grab onto my rocket. I mean, I want. Rock and roll. You you want you want somebody to grab your rocket because nobody's been grabbing it lately. <laughs> so, anyways, you know, so that's life of a stranger. I, it's just a total waste of time. Um, up in the sky, uh, that kind of New York groove type of riff, uh, the obligatory UFO reference. You know, here's 
we're getting it towards the end. I'm like, all right, Ace, it sounds like you're running out of, you're kind of going to <laughs> Aceisms. Um, yep. tip, typical post trouble walking type a song. It's okay. It's passable. Um, you know, and again, the, the guitar break is great. I look, and, and I'm with you, Michael. I would be disappointed to find out if, if Steve played all the solos on this. Um, and, and I, do I think he did? No, but that's kind of maybe the point. I, you know, all I know is that I like the guitar playing on this record a lot. And it goes back to what I said before I even started this review. Steve gets a lot of credit. He's very talented. He's done a great job. He did everything he could to make this as good as he can. You know, my opinion be damned. You know what I mean? And this is another great example of that. I'm like, he's, I'm, I'm not crazy about the song Up in the Sky, but he sure fucking made sure Ace or somebody put a killer fucking Ace Freely style solo in it. And that put a smile on my face. Um, yep. And the song Up in the Sky, I give it a five plus, almost a six. It doesn't suck. It's okay. You know. I I'd, I'd, pro- I'd, pro- I'd probably give it a six or a seven. It's an yeah. it's it's another one of these songs. This whole album is one big earworm for everybody out there. At least in my in my opinion, the more you listen to it, the more it hooks you. And and that was missing on the last half a dozen Ace albums that he's released for me. There was nothing that was like compelling me to like okay tomorrow hit the play on it again hit the play on it again i am looking forward to every day hitting play on this album all right now we're to the last song stratosphere and um and i'm gonna go on a little bit here uh always enjoy aces instrumentals great synth, and this is something for me is ace as a player i don't think he gets enough credit for his sense of melody and feel um I would rather he did an album full of instrumentals over another origin. And, and I, and it was funny. I just started and I just started riffing on the paper because this is the last song as it's going. I'm like, God, I really like this because I like Ace's instrumentals on my iPod because I'm old and I still use one. That's one of my multiple Ace, um, what do you call it? Uh, libraries or whatever. Uh, Playlists. Playlist. I've got Cherokee Boogie, Acorn is Spinning, Fractured, One, Two, and Three, Space Bear, um, uh, Escape from the Island, because he pretty much plays everything on that. Uh, Star, is it Starship? Frag, I already got that one. Well, Genghis Khan, now let's face it, if, if you guys are the Ace Geeks one, I'll, yes, there's lyrics in Genghis Khan, but he basically just says Genghis Khan over and over and over again. You know, whatever, moving on, Genghis Khan. That's it. There's no really chorus or verse in that. So I, I threw that on there too. But I mean, that's like 11 on my playlist, like an hour long. I, and I actually listen to that a lot. I like all of Aces. And again, Acorn is spinning. There's the talking in there, but there's no verse, chorus, verse, chorus right. sort of thing. So I like Aces' sense of melody. I, I think, you know, so here overall and then i'm gonna i'll, I'll wrap it all up well michael hey what do you tell me what do you think of stratosphere? i i think stratosphere is 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 good it's really good it it has it it it's an instrumental but it felt different enough from his typical fractured mirrors that i was like okay this isn't just fractured mirror 12 um this felt like it was original on its own it's beautiful I mean, I, I'm with you. I've And I've said this when we've reviewed any of Ace's past albums. I would love Ace to do an instrumental album. Showcase your guitar playing. That is the first thing the vast majority of Ace Fraley fans ever got hooked on was Ace's guitars, not Ace's vocals. I got hooked on the, the in Ace's own words, so don't chew me up, Ace's sloppiness. It just, it's got this weird flow. It's got this weird feel to it. I would love an album of nothing but that. I tell you what, one of the, the cool things on, and you can find it on YouTube, somebody went and put all of, like, like 20 Kiss songs in a row, and all he just put was Ace's solo part in it. But, but it almost works as like a 20-minute song because the guy is so 
lyrical playing wise. And what I mean by that is this, you know, look at Firehouse, but down, but down, but down, but down. It was, and, and even, you know, um, and, and all better. You can just go on and on in a strange ways that that's solo in there. And it's solo from Parasite, you know, and, and even stuff. I mean, Bob Ezrin did this, but Detroit Rock City, the, yep. you know, the so Ace is Ace has something they call it it. You either have it or you don't have it. And Ace's guitar playing has it. I think that's why Gene and Paul took him originally over Bob Kulik because was Bob probably a technical better player? Yeah. He didn't have it. And yep. don't have to describe it, but we all know what it is because we as KISS fans can't wait for after the second course or after that bridge for Ace Frehley to fucking crank up his amp, you know, and listen to the the solo and calling Dr. Love, you know what I mean? Or just it's Ace, man. And just yep. nobody does it better. It, 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 it's, it's pretty unique and identifiable when he really gets into his mindset of a solo. You're like, that's, that's flowing. You, you can't, you can try to perfect note for note, but it's missing that it that makes it just a bit better. Just, yeah. you know, is, is, is it, is it, it, you know, it's a great cake, but that frosting has something special in it that makes it just better. The, you know, the seasoning on a, on a great steak. It's Put just it that way. special. That, that- the song Dark Light is kind of a throwaway song on a poor album. Sorry, it is. Um, but the solo makes it worth sitting through that. Da-na, 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 da-na. It just, but when that solo kicks in, you're like, all right, that's why I'm listening to this. Yep. That that solo part makes it. And Ace just has that knack for making a solo make the song there's again it's so lyrical you can you can almost sing them i mean is yep. he's just he's just got that touch and i will tell you you know I, I i went and saw um and this is where i want to wrap everything up so i i give the record um depending on how you add it again it, it, it had 110 points possible I took a little leeway with the pluses and minuses. Again, I gave some songs a, a an eight minus a seven plus. So I gave this right around a 70. Now, keep in mind, out of 110 10 points, halfway is 55, right? So it's better. I mean, again, giving it 70, it's... Do you, do, do, do you remember what you would have scored any of his last, most recent well, albums? I started doing that. I started going back looking through some of my old notes i actually scored space invader a little bit higher um i actually liked that wreck what a girl wants to me is probably the best song since trouble walk and i i like that one a whole lot um again i i i i still think a post again because 78 is a totally different animal from Freely's Comet to 2024, I think Trouble Walking is his best record. I think his next best record, and I'm including the Freely's Comet ones, I think his next best record, probably Space, this one's tied with Space Invader. I think it's second best. Um, for the same reasons on Space Invader, there's some real shit, but there's also some brilliance, you know. The only one I really don't like is is uh, the Todd Solo Todd Solo album. Um, it's it's weird though because in my top five post seventy eight songs, Insane's in the top five. I love that song. That's everything. No, oh, see, I can't stand Insane. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's annoying um, to my ears. But well, the whole record to me, except for that song. It, well, I like Acorn Spinning. I like. Um, but, you know, I thought that was really poorly written. I, I will tell you, I've never put it this way. I like, as Pee Wee once said, like Dottie, like. I like, um, you get the Pee Wee Herman reference. I always love that part. Like Dottie. So I like the first one. 
I never was crazy about the production. I thought he played it way too safe. That record never set well with me. It's just okay, I guess. That 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 first Freely's Comet record, I just always don't get me wrong. Ace, I think, plays really well on it. I just I thought his band just didn't. It wasn't a great rock and roll band, and I was expecting a great rock and roll. I, I tell you what, in my opinion, they were missing Richie Scarlet on the first record. I, I it needed that attitude because I think that's what kicked Trouble Walkins' ass. Again, shot full of rock. I'd put, put it this way. I'd put shot full of rock against any song since 78. I think that one comes out number one. That is still my my favorite song from Ace, uh, from my favorite Ace solo. Um, Trouble Walking, start to finish, is just, you know, he also, you know, the, the Remember Me on there, um, five cards. So, but, you know, just, uh, what's the, oh, what's the, uh, I'm what's the, it's the one that Sebastian does the background vocals on. I don't remember. Right. I'm, I've never been a huge fan of Trouble Walking. Um, anyway, I love that record. Um, two, two other things. I mean, I'm going to give Ace huge props just for still putting out records. Um, because if you remember, or not remember, you guys all know, Ace, and this is, you really can't say it's Gene and Paul's fault. Ace was always a one or two song guy. He just was, you know, he got three on what, on Unmasked and three on, uh, on Dynasty. But, you know, he wasn't a prolific writer. He was, right. but whenever he brought the goods, he tended to, tended to just bring one or two great ideas. I will tell you, and some of you out in this audience know this, there's, there's a song that Ace has um, called uh, Backstage Pass. I'm hoping that he re... Yeah. Um, I hope that one eventually he re-records. I, I, I don't understand why he never... Re to me, that should have been a single back in the day. I mean, it's that good. Um, so, is it It's My Life good? Yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, <laughs> So is, is it Aerosmith good? Just so we can get the Aerosmith reference oh, yeah, into this episode. I love that guy. I love that. He's like, yeah, Aerosmith, there you go. I, I can't believe I haven't mentioned Aerosmith and we've been here for almost two hours. And well, we did now. Show. So there you go. There you go. But, you know, here's another thing about, I went and saw Blue Oyster Cult on Sunday. And, you know, this is one thing though, that about for the, this is for the heavy Kool-Aid drinkers. Buck Dharma, who's a, a guest on this show once, Buck's a couple years older than Ace. Guys, Ace couldn't play half the stuff that he plays. And, and, and I'm making a point here. I'm not, this isn't a knock on Ace. Like I said to you, you guys before, you don't have to be a virtuoso to be great, but you also shouldn't hold, in my opinion, you know, Buck Dharma and, and Billy Gibbons and Ted Nugent. These are guys that are older than Ace and still are predominantly the only guitar on stage. And it, Buck at one point, and again, I just saw him on Sunday night. Today's Wednesday. He did a part in the solo. He got like, you know, he's all into it and he's just fucking on fire. He went down on his knees. I mean, the guy's fucking 76. Shredding, shredding, shredding. Ace that went down record. on his knees. The roadie would have to pick him up. Yeah. Well, here's my point in all this. You know, uh, and, and it goes back to the same thing when people talk about Peter Chris. Look, I love Peter. Peter was an incredible drummer in the 70s. But all you have to do is go watch Ian Pace, who's older than Peter Chris, you know, from Deep Purple. It's night and day. We should love these guys for the songs that we that they played on and, and the legacy of the band that's our favorite. But these other guys, again, you know, the Buck Dharmas and, 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 uh, and, and the fucking uh, Ian Paces, these guys are virtuosos. I mean, it's a different level. You don't, that doesn't mean that it's, you know, some people don't like listening to that. I just appreciate everything. You know, I, I like, you know, from, from fucking Slayer to Sinatra, you know, funk to punk. I, I love music. I, I love, 
anything. Matter of fact, it's funny. And I'm going to go grab it just because it's, I think it's worth it. You know, I, I listened to the Ace record. I'm not kidding. Probably about a dozen times, at least 10. You know, I wanted to really absorb. And, and, and also, too, just because I know how much Joey put his heart and soul into the songs. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, he's a friend of mine. And I wanted to give it, you know, an honest review. And what I just gave you, ladies and gentlemen, is a fucking honest review. Um, I know that Steve would probably disagree with me a lot on a lot of it. But it's all subjective, isn't it? Just because I yeah. said it doesn't mean that it's the way it is. You guys, if, if you think that that whatever the stranger song, whatever, you think it's great, dude, crank it up. Love it. I hope you love it. I just it did nothing for me. And I actually thought it was terrible but that's me you know what yeah you i do? mean you know the i think the my biggest takeaway from this album was i went into the new ace album with zero expectations based off of what he's delivered over the years of it just being average mediocre nothing special maybe one good tune so i had no expectations i was pleased he was doing another album as we've always said it's great that he's doing that but when i played the whole album start to finish it was my sheer surprise at like wow i really was not expecting it to be this good and i'm sensing that sort of comment from a lot of fans online as well that this album really surprised a lot of people that they weren't expecting anything really great and they got more than they were expecting. And when it's 2024 and Ace Fraley delivers an album that I'm speaking just for me surprises the hell out of me, catches me off guard. That's exciting. That was really, you, you know, I mean, I look at it this way. There's so many bands out of the 80s that keep recording music. And for the most part, 90 plus percent of the music is just, eh, okay. No, nothing lights a spark. Nothing sparks anything. But occasionally a band shows up and releases an album or a number of songs on an album where you go, holy crap, this is like right off of their biggest hits back in the day. That's what this felt like to me. And and just to make sure I wasn't mis, misleading myself, because I initially started this like, okay, this is better than anything since the Fraley's Comet debut. And I did purposely go back and listen to Trouble Walking a couple of times to go, did I forget something there? And, and it, it just didn't catch me. I will admit this. I went back and listened to the Fraley's Comet debut a few days ago to listen to it again and go, is it still, is it better than this album? And I've changed my mind. This, in my opinion, is better than the Fraley's Comet debut. The Fraley's Comet debut, the production isn't as, and it's hard to compare because production has changed so much in 40 some years, but it, the Fraley's Comet album doesn't sound nearly as good. It's got a definite few clinkers in there, which I don't like at all. Um, and I've also gone back to make sure the 78 solo album still is the reigning champ. And 78 is still, without question, the reigning champ of Ace's oh, solo yeah. releases. I, you, can't even, you can't even include it. Doesn't even come close. Doesn't even. Real, and, real but that's quick, not that's not saying that this is bad. It's just saying how freaking good the 78 album was. Real, real, real quick, I just pulled this up. Because I'm like, why can't I think of that the song? It's Too Young to Die. That was the one I was thinking of. Okay. But I, I, I pulled it. I'm like. Shot full of rock, better on it, better than anything on this record. Five, and I'm skipping Do Ya. I, I will tell you, I've never been a fan of pretty much any cover Ace has done post 78. I think the version of Ballroom Blitz is cringy. I think the Joker's fucking terrible. I like some of the origin style. I like the mountain that he did on Origin. 
You know what I mean? There's been some, and I'm talking about the songs he did on the record, not at, not one of the origin records. Right. Ever been a fan of his. So I'm not even going to count Do Ya, although I love that song. I love the original. Five Card Stud, eh, it's just an okay song. Hide Your Heart, I like it better than the Kiss version. Just probably because I like his guitar playing in it better. Um, I've never been crazy about that song to begin with, but I actually like the Ace version. And when I say I like it better, I like it that much better. Kind of a whole lot better. Uh, Lost in Limbo, great tune. Trouble Walkins, insane great. Too Young to Die is insane great. Back to School, there's your another throwaway kind of song. Remember Me, I fucking love. And Fractured 3. I, I, Trouble Walking is way better than this new record. I, I, I will go back and give it Trouble Walking another listen. I'm also going to go back and listen to Space Invader and Anomaly just to make sure I didn't miss something. But, you know, though, like Space Invader and Anomaly and Spaceman, they're, they're new enough that I remember having no desire to re-listen over and over to the album. I have, and, and and again, I'll stress this again, for this new album, 10,000 Volts, I have such a desire to re-listen as often as I can. It's it's getting better. It's still fresh. It's still exciting. It's I don't have to force myself to go back and listen to it because we're going to do a review of it. Well, I want to listen Tommy, to this. Engage. I just think that um, Trouble Walking is his best solo record, period, over the 78. I love that record. Absolutely love it. And how I judge it, just like how you said, is you can't wait to listen to it again. I look at it, the record by how many core songs from each one of these records would I put in a playlist and not skip. And on Trouble Walking, there's at least seven, maybe eight that I wouldn't. I think Remember you know, that... Me is one of the greatest songs ever. That that that's interesting how you say if I'd put it in a playlist because just today I took Fighting for Life and put it into my um pump this up exercise going for walk yeah. playlist. Yeah. yeah. I haven't put an Ace Fraley song in a playlist in decades. In right. decades. So you're right. So I mean I, I don't sit here. I'm not the kind of person who judges it based on songwriting or the guitar playing or how well it, I, it's just like, do I want to listen to it again? It's at the end of the day, is the song good enough that I want to listen again and, without and, any, reg any regards to the people involved, the production, anything else? Do I like the song? That's it. I either like it or I don't like it. Mike, that, when I, I, I get, oh, go ahead, Tommy. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and, and and I I don't kid myself either. I don't believe there'll ever be another record made by any band that's as good to me as um, Good by Yellow Brick Road. To me, that is the quintessential perfect record from beginning to end. Yeah, it's got a lot of hits on it that I'd rather not hear as often, you know, because of that, but... That thing is just perfection. It even beats Kiss Alive for me because I can't stand the long. Oh, look solo. at that time. I can't stand. I'm Wait sorry. I can't stand the long drum solo <laughs> and the drawn out nonsense in a um, uh, hundred thousand years or Kiss Alive probably would have been number one, but nothing in my mind beats that. So I look at it now that if I can find a record that has five or six songs on it that I really like, it's a great record. Yep, I, and and that's this album for me. Garbage. Oh, Tommy, Tommy. Fucking... Here's again. Now that's what I was going to say, Michael, and this goes right into what Tommy just said. So I, I, when I say I listen to the new Ace about a dozen times, I, 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 I started listening, and I'm like, okay. I knew as soon as the Stranger Tune came, I just, I, I listened to it a couple times by then. I just like this is not something I like. Fast forward. So finally. But before that, there was an album that I fell in love with by a local band. Um, I mean, it's a national release. This, to me, is the best record out right now. Mac Saturn? Now, they're a Detroit band. Again, like I said to you, I love punk to funk. You know, I love... So this is... If you like songs like Sure Know Something, I'm putting this for Kiss fans. Sure Know Something, um, 
you know, uh, dirty living. I was made for loving you. This is really a, if you took Bruno Mars meets 75 black and blue era Rolling Stones and the Black Crows and throw in some Casey and the Sunshine Band. This You'll is probably get soul, sick on the stew. Soulful. I'm telling you right now, if you get a chance, I'd pull up either Mint Julep or Mr. Cadillac. So again, this, again, this for, for people not- for, for people who are just listening, the band is Max Saturn and the album is hard to sell. And it just came out this year. Mm-hmm. I this thing is on constant play with me. I again, guys, this is not a hard rock album. This is a soulful. But it's again, if you uh, that's why I say Bruno Mars. When I say soulful, it's not like a Sam and Dave sitting by, you know, this is this gets you up. This gets you dancing. This is this is the sexiest fucking record out right now. This record puts the funky in chunky. It does. You want you want and and I and before you guys, because if you if you Google it, you're gonna unfortunately they hired somebody to tour with them. Big press release, Mike. You as you as a marketer, you, this would have fucking made you put a bullet to your head. They, the record comes right out of the gate. National airplay again. It's a local Detroit band, so I know who they are. Um, and I'm not going to get into one of the guys they recently hired into the band. Did some really horrible stuff, and fortunately, he's in jail now. Oh Jesus. Yes, yeah, and it's horrible. It's to put it, it's the worst thing you can be accused of, I think. So, anyways, but he wasn't he wasn't a member of, but he was like part of their touring, right? And it just took the fucking wind out of all the sails. So, I just want you to know you're going to come across that story, and I'm with you. Um, they postponed everything, but this fucking thing just came out. It's a powerhouse. I, I have not been blown away by a record. And again, this is not a hard rock record. It's a it's a it's a, 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 a rocking, soulful, funky rock stuff. Again, if you like stuff like, uh, like I said, Dirty Living or like that kind of music, um, you know, even Bruno Mars, classic Casey and the Sunshine Band, big horns, great grooves. Can't beat this record again. Mint Julep and Mr. Cadillac are the two singles. You will not be able to get those songs out of your head. Just fucking incredible. And again, the whole record's insane. I've been, I, this has been non nonstop on my, uh, I must have listened to that fucking thing 10 times today when I, because I was driving. I'm like, just can't get enough. You pit and fucking repeat. So, Mike, I know the feeling. I've had that feeling with this. Yeah. But I'm not skipping any songs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, at, at, it it might sound like a very simplistic way to review albums personally, but at the end of the day, if an I could review an album and go, this is a spectacular album, amazing players, amazing solos, but if I don't want to listen to it, how good is it? How much am I going to really, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it simply comes back to, do I want to play the song and do I want to listen to it? Does it make me smile? Do I look forward to it? Do I enjoy it? After I get all of that, then I might spend time and go, okay, who are the songwriters on the album? Who who are the guest musicians on the album? Then I start going down the rabbit hole. But I've said this online many times, and this is for me. I'm not saying this is for everybody. If I love a song and then I learn something different about how it was created or who was involved, it doesn't change the fact that I still love the song. I've just learned something new about it. I'm not going to hate. I gave this as an example to some, some fan who's like, Oh my God, you know, the new Ace Frehley album, Ace doesn't write anything on this new album. I'm like, yeah, well then go back and listen to, I don't know, New York groove or 2000 men. Oh wait, you can't listen to those because Ace didn't even write New York groove. Or I don't know why anyone man. cares. Either they're the record cover is good songs, or it's not. But yeah. they're great songs. They're great songs. You know, I, it was funny to see some, because my first thing I went to, and it was nice because I did see some people get it. Some people get it. Some people don't. Then are, do you like any Ozzy Osbourne song? Ozzy doesn't fucking write his stuff. Yeah. Bob, 
Bob Daisley does or did. And the guy who's doing his stuff now, I mean, that's what he does. He basically just, hey, Ozzy, sing this, you know. And again, there's nothing wrong with it. No, I love if it's I a great it. if it's a, first of all, if the artist themselves says this is what I want to do to make a great album or a great song. It's their fucking decision. It's their music. It's their band. And I either I'm going to like the music or I'm not going to like the music. Well, Mike, I do got to throw a little asterisk in this, though. If, if you have uh, Ultimate Sin and you open the record, it says all songs written by Ozzy Osbourne. That kind of shit I don't like. Because you know you didn't, not even yep. fucking close. Don't take credit for it. That's one of the refreshing things with Steve. Steve's like, you know what? Ace was, he didn't go, Ace was on fire, wrote the whole fucking thing. And man, I was glad I was back behind the board twilling the knots. Cut, cut all that fucking, you know, magic. No, Steve was honest. Steve, and I yeah, Steve, Steve said 95% of the ideas, and the, I want to make this clear. He said, ideas came from steve now and and mark you might add to this an idea doesn't mean that meant the entire song was written by and recorded by that person as a band ideas come in and you sift through ideas sucky idea great idea take that part use that part now let's figure out how to record the song with the best talent we've got Yes, we'll rewrite. So to be very clear, when Steve said 95% of the ideas, that is not Steve saying I wrote 95% of all the songs and I played on 95% of all the songs. There's a difference between an idea and the finished product. Yeah, you know, to, to be fair, though, look, you know, it's kind of like what I said, and I wasn't trying to be a jerk about it. Ace isn't in the greatest of shape. Um, Steve even said it early in the interview, and it's something we begrudgingly admit. Ace says it too. He's lazy. Um, that, And again, that's kind of where I was talking about with the Buck Dharma thing. You know, I, it bothers me as a music fan not to see somebody like Buck not get more props who has the goods and he still has the goods. Yep. I, I just, as a, as somebody who, you know, I'm 58 I'm, I play in three bands, you know, I, I, I still love doing this. I, I, I want to do it until I can't do it anymore. And not that I just, as somebody who participates in this, I, I love, I, I, I've seen so many guys again, like Buck who don't get the, the credit the, for their work. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and even, you know, think about Boys to Culture just for a second. They haven't had a hit in, like, 45 years or so. I mean, it's the last time they had a hit record, really. Early 80s? Yeah, and it, but here's the thing. They still put out records on a regular basis. Just I announced a new record. Yeah, correct. Um, matter of fact, um, they played at the Royal Oak Music Theater um, on Sunday, sold it out. If it wasn't sold out, it was damn close to being sold out. place was packed. Matter of fact, we got there and doors open. The fucking line was around the building. And it kind of warmed my heart. I'm like, this is fucking awesome. It's good to see all the... Uh, oh, and I want to say, I think his name was Matt. He, he was sitting near me. And he's like, hey, I, I know you from Three Sides. I just thought it was really cool being at a Blue Oyster cult. So Matt, thank you. He was really nice talking for, for a minute or two. Um, that's what I mean. I, I, I love the whole communal thing. But it, sometimes, though, some of those other guys maybe you know, then don't get the props. And I, and I think they should because, yep. you know, they're, they, they're, uh, they're incredible. You know, I, I, I think I had mentioned it to you guys in one of our chats. I'm like, it, it, this new ACE album is becoming psycho circus conspiracy part two. If you were around during the release of psycho, psycho circus, you know what we're referring to. Who played on it? Who wrote on it? It's not true. This isn't. And that's what's going. And you could sit here and go, it's not a bad thing. It's got people really talking about this Ace album. It's just so, for me, again, just for me, 
I sit here and go, what a fucking waste of time to sit here and figure out who played the rhythm guitar on this track. And it doesn't sound like Ace. And Good Lord. I, I, you, you, you guys know I brought this. There's some fans that are like, no, the vocals are all artificial intelligence. They're all AI vocals on this album. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Who's got the time to sit here and deal with that? Either okay. you like the song, don't listen to it, don't buy it, or you do and you support it. But here's that's, only that's it. I, I told I've told the story on the show before. I remember when Creatures of the Night came out, and I was I was 17. I'd already been playing in bands for a few years. I was I had it enough in my head telling my buddy Rick, I'm like, when we were listening to the record, I'm like, that doesn't sound like Ace. Ace doesn't play with a whammy bar. You know what I mean? It was just like Ace was on the cover. I didn't know that, but my ears have already were developed enough, meaning, you know, playing in bands and writing songs and stuff. You're like, oh, hold on a second. I'm not selling him. You know, whereas like Steve knows Ace's lick. So if he did try and do some of that stuff, which I'm fine with. Oh, by the way, that's another thing. There, I want to play devil's advocate another thing. If if Steve did some of that, and I think he did play some of the solos or partial, and they had that eight classic ace feel, and you're fine with it, how about those fans who were mad that Tommy, and especially on Sonic Boom, really went to his ace freely licks? Oh, he's just copying ace. I'm like, what's the difference? I mean, you're, you're taking ace as a guitar player, and you're going, hey, I want to play something like he'd play here. You know what I mean? That's a that's that's the ultimate form of flattery. That's that's a tip of the cap. It's no different if somebody's writing a song and they go, "God, well, I'd like to put this Jimmy Page sort of thing in, or put a Pete Townsend sort of, you know, because well, look, that's what people do when they write songs. They're like, "God, what should I use on this bridge? Well, this has got kind of a a Motown feel, so we're gonna, you know, whatever, put this kind of fill in." I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. And that's what I mean. I, but if Steve I, is doing that, then so be it. What's wrong with that? So so be it. I, I also think, again, let's look back at the last three studio albums that Ace has done. Spaceman, Space Invader, Anomaly. There was never this kind of chatter going on around those albums that I recall. I mean, there was excitement that there was a new Ace album, but I don't recall fans like, oh, that's not Ace playing. Oh, who did the rhythm on that? Oh, who wrote the... Sin I mean, this album has got the fans talking enough because they care. And I think that's a good thing. It's putting Ace in the spotlight for his music, not for him attacking some ex-band members. Agreed. It's letting the music do the talking. So, okay, go debate all you want, but I'm saying I don't remember this level of, of debate and discussion on his last studio albums to this degree. Well, there was somebody in the comments that was talking about pitch, you know, pr pitch perfect, pitch control, all that sort of thing, and basically saying that people don't care anymore that you is that because back in the day you had to care about the music to get it right, but you know, I, I, I don't think I agree with that because if you didn't have the technology at the time, you couldn't use it. Now the technology is there. If you can use it to enhance the song and make it better. Again, I just really don't care. All I care about is that at the end of the day, I like the songs. Yeah. It's either a good song or a bad song. I mean, and 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 that is what's going to make a song live forever or die and disappear and be forgotten. It's how yeah. good is it? How yeah. many people hit the play button on it? A song doesn't live forever because of the guitar player that was credited of playing it, even if it's a sucky song. It's just, right. that's reality. We've said that about Kiss. People say Kiss has doesn't have great songs. Well, you don't stand the test of time for 50 years 
without, without great break. songs. You can't have songs that stand the test of time without being able to write and play. Mike, the like only way you know if they, if they stand the test of time is by having them around long enough and listening to them. Yeah. You know, because I don't the know. People, I mean, the I, only I, people who don't like them didn't listen to them. Right. So. Right. And, and I, I can't tell you that Monster is the best Kiss record, nor would I ever argue that point, because I don't know what is. But I can tell you there's two songs on there that are on my playlist that I love almost more than anything else they've ever done. So it's just, it's all subjective. It's what means something to you. And just because you don't connect with something doesn't mean it's not good. You know, I don't yep. connect with Deep Purple, but it doesn't mean that they're not great. It just doesn't connect for me. But for Mark, he loves it. And some of the stuff that I listen to, Mark's going to be like, I just don't get it. But that's okay. Because again, it's just choice. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but I just don't know why people get so fucking upset about who did this and who did that and who played on what doesn't matter. Either the record's good and enjoy it or it isn't. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, I am extremely happy. Ace got together with Steve and that this was what they were able to create. If they could create another album like this a year from now, two years from now, I would be happy. I would be happy again. This is the first Ace album in decades that I have been looking forward to playing again and again and again. And I that makes me feel good as a rock yeah. fan, as yeah. an Ace fan. So, congr yeah. again, congrats to Steve for everything he did to get this out of Ace. Congrats to Ace for allowing Steve to do what he did to create this album and and if you don't like it you got no problem with that well you and i think well i also, don't like it well and i also think too michael if you're listening to you speak for so long we've been friends for a very long time i know that the producer matters and i think that maybe that's one of the reasons why you like this record better is because whoever produced it mean steve did a better job in production than a lot yep. of the other people who produced the records in the past. Because my understanding that a producer is not only the one who gets the sound, but gets the best out of each artist to get the, the best songs, best solos, everything out of them. And that's the art, you know, it, not everyone can be a producer and some are apparently a lot more effective than others. So if the producer for some of those past records was somebody who just kind of showed up and pushed the right buttons and said, okay, yeah, we got to take, then, then he he desperately needed someone like Steve in his life that would also help with the writing and give suggestions about well why don't we try this why don't we try that what about these pieces and at least yep. that's what I heard yes last week with Steve and Joey. Yeah, I, I was going to say that was one of my favorite parts of last week's interview was listening to Steve talk about the challenges he faced in getting this out of Ace, the hurdles he couldn't avoid, meaning. Hey, you know, Ace said there's got to be a cover tune. Ace said there's going to have to be an instrumental on here. I was able to talk him out of your love by the outfield, but we still had to do an instrument. I, I loved hearing Steve talk about how he acknowledged that Ace is lazy and that he pushed Ace and pushed Ace to get more and more out of him. You know, and again, I'm I'm not a producer. I'm not even a musician. But that's what I love to hear because generally, when you push anybody in their area of expertise, you will most likely get better work out of them because you push them, you make them work harder, you make them focus, you yeah. you 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 tell them no, that 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 chorus isn't good. Oh no, you got to listen to this. Let me let me let me bring Joey in and play the drums for you and listen to how it sounds here. That that was all really great. I loved hearing that. Again, you may not have liked the end result, but I loved hearing how Steve did everything he could to push Ace. And some artists probably need it more than others, but I think it also helps for someone that has enough confidence in themselves, which it sure sounds like Steve does, to, to be able to push 
to make it better. I mean, the last thing that you want is to have a bunch of kiss asses around you, regardless of who you are, because how can you ever push yourself to be better if you don't have honest input? Now, you may not agree with some of what people say to you, but at least consider it because at the end of the day, that makes a huge difference, I think. Yep. I, 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 son I think sonically, you can always tell when a producer has pushed the artist and worked their ass off to get it better. It, uh, you know, as we referred to that it that Ace has as a guitar player, there's that it that an album can have where you listen to it and go, yeah, this album just has something special about it. There's something additional going on here. Right. Um, all right. So there you go, people. You got an extra long episode this week. And Mark talked a lot. We apologize if you he didn't like that. And you know, he, he was he's very get frozen this week. Yeah, no freezing up. He's very happy. He's not cranky. Tommy just sat back very quietly and just said he's not an Ace fan and he's not a Kiss fan. What the fuck is he doing here? Don't know. <laughs> um, I think you just said, the, "Hey, let's uh, do a podcast," and here I am. The 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 obvious homework question is, and you know, we asked it sort of last week, but let's ask it again. Do you want to hear more what? or less from Mark? There you go. Do I'll we give, do we give Mark the microphone all the time? Um, what what what's your take on on ten thousand volts? And and by take, we mean, what do you think of the songs? What do you think of the production? What do you, whatever, anything we talked about today, what, what's your opinion on it? Were, were, were you, did you have any expectations for this album? And were you surprised or were you disappointed? Let us know. I mean, it, I think it's a fun album that, that, that's the way I, it's a, fun rock album that is enjoyable for me to listen to now unfortunately ace probably won't play any of this live in concert unfortunately we'll find out though <laughs> but he is going to play right, rock and roll all this. night in concert <laughs> oh boy that's another that was another go play yeah, yeah. max saturn go get like max so saturn I, I i bought the vinyl and then uh, i noticed the the, the whatever the mp3 whatever thing you can buy had three bonus tunes if you bought so i bought the guy and i ended up getting that too so i just got the three uh live songs i was pretty happy yeah if you listen to max saturn let us know what you think about that as well yeah. um that's it i mean this was this was a fun episode i don't think we hated on ace you guys know that i had a fan comment after listening to our episode last week he said after listening to this episode, follow the logic here. After listening to this episode, I now realize why I don't listen to you. Because you hate Ace so much. <laughs> you listen Every to the episode. It, like, well, you listen to the episode to realize why you don't listen to us. And all of the praise, because I think I praised Ace pretty highly even last week. Even I hate so Ace. Today? You know, yeah, I, I I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. We have fun. It's all about having fun, people. And Ace delivered a fun album, in my opinion. It gets it gets two thumbs up from me. Mark, one or two thumbs up. One, one and a, one and a grin. Okay, Tommy. After one listen, two, two thumbs, thumbs up. up. Yeah, there you go. Because it, it's good enough to make me want to listen again. I just haven't had a chance because I put in a stereo system in my office and so i've been collecting vinyl as some of you know and now i'm bringing over all of my um my uh cds i'm getting rid of the jewel cases and putting them in the plastic sleeves like this so that i can easily store a lot more in a small box and so i've just been busy with that and then you run into like you know cheap trick all shook up and i'm like hmm, i haven't listened to this from beginning to end in quite some time yeah, great yeah yeah so i've been listening to been on a musical journey but the high priest of rhythmic noise noise and who the king fucking oh god I'm gonna go that, I, I i've said this before all shook up was was an album when that first came out hated it really? couldn't stand it 
Didn't mm-hmm. like it at all. Too, too strange, too different. Now, God, I love that album so much. Yeah. It's all perspective. Oh it's God. perspective. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't yep. a huge fan of it when it first came out. Really? I like it from, from day one. I, I was turning it off after the third song. The first yeah. three were powerhouse, over the top, amazing, amazing. And then, you know, the can't stop it, but I'm going to try. And I'll, I'm just like, stop it, but I'm good. I okay. love it. I mean, it's no, I, I like it more now, but at the time, I'm like, yeah, at the time, I, I was, I was, I was like, I wanted Dream Police Part Two. Yeah, in some ways you got it though. In some ways, it's not in some too ways, but there there was enough of a diversion. And and let's be honest, that was very early in Cheap Trick's career. It was very early in my fandom of Cheap Trick. I have learned that that quirkiness and weirdness of Cheap Trick is what makes them very special. Back right, then, it, it was let's not. Wrap it up. Let's wrap All right, up. so there you go. Right. Homework's done. We got to go feed Mark. He said everything he needs to say. He doesn't want to talk anymore. Yeah. Um, we don't have a guest next week, so we'll figure something out. Oh, I'm sure we can find something. We always pull like something out idea. of them. Yeah, that could uh-huh. be a fun. That could be a fun, interesting idea. Mm-hmm. Mark is just gonna have to play along with it because it's so above his head. It involves oh, technology. technology. But What's nothing that? that you'll have to do. You just show up. Just yeah. show up. What are you Mark? talking? I missed something. What are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> All right, let's talking about it. an idea that Michael has for next week's show. And I was like, yeah, that sounds great. We should do it this week. And he's like, are you kidding me? Mark has so much to say from last week. We've got to let him go. <laughs> we got to let him talk okay. or he'll blow so this up. This is for he'll next week. It. So you can read the thread and you'll see it. But we wanted to make sure you understand. If, if, if we didn't do. let Mark talk today, you would have been reading a headline in the Detroit newspaper. Man <laughs> explodes in basement. Destroys exactly. his collection with blood and guts. <laughs> yes, true. And he obviously had right. a crab dinner. <laughs> All right, guys. That, that's it. Three sides of the coin. We will see everybody next if week. If you have something to say, leave a voicemail or send us a text message. Call 320-515. Voices for Three Sides of the Coin. Provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and by JessicaMarsVoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.